Heyo, Duck of the Stars here, back at it with yet another video. So recently, YouTube recommended me a video from a channel that goes by the name of Mr. Who's the Boss. The video in question is from a channel much larger than mine. If you haven't seen it already, I do recommend it. It is a nice, well-edited video. And minor inaccuracies aside, there's only one thing that really caught my attention. And assuming you've seen the thumbnail for this video, you'll know that it actually comes from the thumbnail on his video. In fact, the only real issue I had with the video was this big ugly price tag in the background of that thumbnail. So what's wrong with it? Well, everything. But before I get into that, if you have not liked this video or subscribed to my channel, please do so now. As a smaller creator, it's you guys' support, dialogue, and recommendations that really motivate me to keep making this kind of content for you. That being said, let's get right back to the video. While Nintendo devices nowadays are way overpriced on the secondhand market, this doesn't make his claim that all of these cost $30,000 true by any standard. And you can take my word for that. I've purchased every home Nintendo device after 1983, and I don't think I've had $30,000 to my name yet. Now in his defense, he does go out of his way to purchase these consoles in pristine condition. For those who aren't into game collecting as a serious hobby, there are different conditions in which you can purchase any given item. Of course, you can purchase the item only, which will often be called loose. You can purchase the item in its box with all the contents, you'll call that complete in box. And what it seems he does here, and I can't confirm it, is he seems to buy the product new in box. And of course, buying a product from 1985 new in the box can get fairly expensive. He also purchases a standard television set from each era, as well as the mainline Mario game from every generation. But if we take a look at that thumbnail again, that doesn't look like it's complete in box, or new in box for that matter. Of course, that's because he opens them, but this is blatant false advertising. And why would he do that? I can't put my finger on it. And perhaps a better question, why does that even matter? Well, some people wouldn't have a problem with it at all. I, on the other hand, take it very seriously. And gatekeeping this hobby, telling a select number of people that they can have this experience, well, then you're just hindering the ability of millions of gamers to have fun just like you are. Think about all the people who then decide that game collecting isn't for them or gaming isn't for them. That because they can't have these experiences, they don't get to enjoy the same things that I do just because I have money. It's something to be enjoyed by everyone, and I will make sure it stays that way. Now, I'm no stranger to crunching numbers on this channel, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to show you how much this actually will cost you in November 2022. To clarify, I'm going to show you how much each of these consoles will cost, either loose or complete in box. And to make it slightly easier to understand, as well as to future-proof it in case prices go up, I'm going to give you the numbers to the nearest 50. So for instance, if I can find a console for $80, I'll put it at 100 instead. Or if it's at 120, I'll put it at 150 just so that I'm not underestimating. But I've been talking for long enough, let's get right into it. Now already we've come across a problem. The Nintendo Famicom and the Nintendo NES are technically the same console, but look different and have different enough libraries that certain individuals will consider them entirely different consoles. Whether you decide to or not is totally up to you. I am from the crowd that believes it's a different console, so let's take a look at those first. In general, the Famicom is one of the easier consoles to find, especially because you don't have to buy any controllers with it. This goes for around $100 loose and around $150 complete in box. If you lived in the United States or Europe, the console you would get would be the Nintendo Entertainment System. While you may also find a Nintendo Entertainment System for $100 loose, the price gets exponentially more expensive at $300 complete in box. Nintendo would have the same kind of issue with its next console, the Super Famicom if you lived in Japan, or the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in the US and Europe. I tend to see less people consider the Super Famicom and the Super Nintendo different consoles, specifically because of the design similarities, as well as the fact that it was much easier to play Super Famicom games on the Super Nintendo and vice versa. But for the sake of clarity, I am going to cover both, just so that you know exactly what you can pay for these devices. Now from my personal experience, the Super Famicom was actually one of the easiest consoles to find. I 
put down that you could find it for about $100 loose, though I found mine for $40 as there are a lot of generous people on eBay willing to give you a good deal on these. This goes for the complete in-box versions as well. You can easily find one of these for less than $150. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System is also relatively cheap. You can definitely find one with a budget of $100. However, sellers are not as generous about the complete in-box version. You will have to be willing to shell out around $400 for one of these. Nintendo 64 was Nintendo's first console to be unified in both name and design. And while Nintendo did still region lock the console, there is no debate that the Nintendo 64 is the one console across all regions. I should note that the reason you're seeing much older footage from my channel is that every other appearance of my Nintendo 64 features the Nintendo 64 disk drive add-on. And given this is a video on Nintendo home consoles and not Nintendo add-ons, I will only be dedicating this time to the home consoles. If you would like to see a video on Nintendo's add-ons, please leave a comment down below. Once again, you can find a loose version of this console for around $100 online. Alternatively, if you want the complete in-box edition, you'll have to pay $250 out of pocket. While it was one of Nintendo's least successful consoles, the Nintendo GameCube is still loved by many today. Because of that, the price is actually on the rise at the moment. We luckily have not reached a point where you have to pay hundreds of dollars for the console, yet the games are getting more and more expensive every single day. But as of now, you can get a loose GameCube for around $100 online, and you can get a GameCube complete in box for $200. On the contrary, the Nintendo Wii is the second best selling Nintendo home console of all time. And likely because there are so many units out there, the Nintendo Wii is still not hard to find at all. The Nintendo Wii is actually the first console where we have three visibly different models. In the video you're seeing right now, I have the Wii Mini on the left and the original Wii on the right. For this video, I am going to be talking about the original. In which case, you could find a loose console for $100, but keep in mind if you're looking for any model, this could easily go lower. However, you could also find a complete in-box Nintendo Wii for $150, and I say $150, although it seems like you can find it as low as $100, not including tax and shipping. So when you're looking for one of these consoles, keep in mind that you can buy a complete in-box version or a loose version for around the same price. Following the success of the Wii, Nintendo attempted to make a sequel to the device, known as the Wii U. Now in complete contrast with the Wii, the Wii U is Nintendo's worst selling home console. This becomes a major issue for collectors since there aren't many units available for purchase. However, at the moment, you can buy one for $150 loose, or you can buy a complete in-box unit for around $200. And finally, we come to the present day with Nintendo's current home console device, the Nintendo Switch. The Switch is Nintendo's best-selling home console, and because of this, you might think it's a lot like the Wii. However, it's still currently in production, which makes it a lot more expensive than something like the Wii. Prices are also constantly fluctuating on this thing, so forgive me if I say something that's incorrect by the time you watch this video. I should also note that I am pulling prices for the original Nintendo Switch model, and not the Nintendo Switch Lite, which isn't a home console, or the Nintendo Switch OLED. From what I can tell, you can find a Nintendo Switch console loose for around $200 right now. And if you want it complete in box, it'll cost you around $250. Of course, if you're looking for a complete in-box unit, you might as well go ahead and buy one in stores for an additional $50. If you'd like a grand total for how much these devices will cost you, you will spend around $1,000 if you buy them loose, around $2,000 if you buy them complete in-box. And again, it's by no means cheap nowadays to buy these Nintendo devices, However, it's not the $30,000 that our friend Mr. Who's the Boss claimed. But I don't really want that to be the takeaway that Mr. Who's the Boss made a bad video. Again, by no means is it a bad video. Do not go and give this man any hate because of this video. He has done a fantastic job editing and compiling his video. It's very informative and covers some topics that I don't cover in mine. I recommend it for anyone who wants to learn more on Nintendo home consoles. Much of the content in his video completely accurate. And on top of that, his graphics are quite appealing and easy to understand. That being said, his thumbnail was quite misleading, and that's something that I was here to clear up for you guys. I hope that this video has not only been informative, but entertaining as well. 
Gaming and game collecting are two topics I very much enjoy talking about, especially because I don't hear many people from my generation talking about game collecting. I hope this has been informative to anybody who's been interested in the idea of collecting video games, but scared off thus far because of prices. And once again, prices are a concern, but it's not as bad as some people make it out to be. It's certainly not $30,000. And I hope that by making this video, I've inspired some of you guys to start thinking about your own gaming collections as well. It's a fun hobby for anybody who enjoys video games and does not require you to be rich to do so. I hope that if you did enjoy this video that you'll consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel if you have not done so already. As a smaller creator, it means so much for you guys to provide your feedback and to provide your support. The motivation and inspiration I get to make these videos comes from you guys. So if you guys have any recommendations for me, I would be happy to receive them down in the comments below, and I'll hopefully be able to make videos more tailored to what you guys are looking for. Until then, see you guys in the next video.